kayak fishing is freaking awesome. That's why I have over 800 videos on the topic. But what might be awesome to me is not awesome for you. So let's go through the nine reasons you may not want to treat yourself to that expensive fishing kayak. Let's go. Number one, W-I-N-D, the wind. This might be the number one complaint I get, especially from paddle kayakers first getting into the sport. Not only is it difficult to go where you want to go, a lot of times on windy days, I'll see kayak anglers like tucked back in the coves, protected by the wind. This is not necessarily where they want to fish. It's where they have to fish because of the wind. Wind is also going to affect your kayak positioning in a big way. Like right now, it's windy out today. And whenever that wind hits the broad side of my kayak, it moves me. I have a pedal drive kayak, so it's a little easier for me to position. But if you're in a paddle kayak, it's gonna be extremely frustrating to cast to your sweet honey hole you positioned up on. By the time you get your cast back in, your the wind has blown you in a position where you actually have to, oh, a fish. There we go, there we go. Get this video stuff. I got fish to catch. Where were we? So by the time you get your lure back to the kayak, uh, you're in a completely different position. You gotta stop fishing, gotta reposition your kayak again. And so wind is going to affect that. Also wind is going to affect how fast you can get places, right? So in a boat, if a storm comes up and kind of sneaks up on you, you can just turn on the engine or rip at 60 miles per hour back to the boat ramp. But in a fishing kayak, you're limited, right? So just a few things to consider. So there are some options for you at how to manage your kayak in the wind. Of course you can do an anchor, but however, if you drop that anchor, uh, the wind is still going to dictate where your kayak is positioned. So you can install an anchor trolley, which will help as well. There are some more expensive options. I have a pedal drive kayak, so I don't carry an anchor at all because I manage my boat positioning through my pedal drive and my rudder control system. And there's even some more expensive options out there where you can get like a spot lock. I'm gonna murder that rooster. Like, where did it even come from? I'm not even near like a farm right now, it's crazy. And there's some even more expensive options when it comes to trolling motors that have like GPS spot lock, which is essentially like a GPS motor that will keep you in perfect boat position. But man, this stuff gets expensive real fast. Also another way kayak anglers kind of stay in one spot is they will get something called a power pole and you attach that to the back of your fishing kayak and you flick a switch and this pole goes down into the mud or in that body of water you're at and keeps you in position now, the thing is, these things are really expensive. They're like $600 a pop, plus the battery, plus the mounting hardware in some cases. So like I said, this stuff gets expensive real fast, but wind is like your number one nemesis in kayak fishing. So you gotta figure out a way to dial that in or it's not gonna be a pleasant experience for you. All right, the second complaint I get a lot is loading and unloading your fishing kayak. Now, for most of you, I imagine you're probably car topping it, right? Throw it in the back of your truck. But nonetheless, some kayaks are ultra lightweight and others can weigh quite a bit. So if you're 25 years old, it might not be something you think about very often, but as you get older, you don't want to throw your back out um, because that 125 pound kayak shifted weight on you as you're pulling it off your SUV and because you'll be out for weeks or you might even give up on the sport altogether. And that would be an absolute terrible shame because there's nothing like kayak fishing. And you might want to avoid buying a fishing kayak if, number three, you don't enjoy sitting for long periods of time. I know for me and my Bonafide P127, I could fish 12 hours a day sitting in this bad boy. It's extremely comfortable, but not all kayaks are created the same. Some are extremely uncomfortable. Some are very comfortable. So no, the majority of the time, and this is unlike like bank angling and boat angling when you're standing and moving around a lot, kayak fishing, you're sitting the majority of the time. And yes, you can stand up. Uh, and I do that every once in a while to stretch. However, the majority of the time you are sitting and fishing. So many fishing kayaks are actually well suited for standing and fishing. So think through your personal abilities and your equilibrium to see if that is the right option for you. Oh, yes, sir. Ooh, that's a nice one. Oh, I lost him, you son of a biscuit. All right, let's move on to number four. You might not want to buy a fishing kayak if you don't want to get a little exercise. I know the first time I went out on my fishing kayak, holy crap. From the pedaling to the casting, and I was using muscles I haven't used in a very long time. And I know with pedal kayaking, I can get my cardio up pretty good. So it can be a pretty good workout. I just got a hit. I'm goofing around shooting a video and there's a ton of fish biting right now. <laughs> I also know that transporting your kayak to and from the water, man, I can be like sweating like a pregnant nun sitting next to the pope, depending on how long of a distance I have to pull my kayak from my trailer down to the water. Now I believe that fishing from a kayak far outweighs any of the effort put into it, right? But for some people, exercise is a four letter word. So I'd hate for you to underestimate the amount of effort that you have to put into this sport in order to get the benefits from it. 
So it might be something to consider before you purchase that first fishing guide. Video, catching some fish. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. All right, next, you should avoid buying a fishing kayak if you have abysmal balance, right? A lot of people get injured getting in and out of their fishing kayak. They're trying to enter from a dock, they're trying to enter from the water, they're entering from the bank. If you don't have great balance, kayak fishing is going to be very difficult. So, I personally never flipped a kayak, but man, I always tell people that if you kayak fish consistently, it's not a matter of if, it's just a matter of when you're going to accidentally flip that kayak. Now, I flipped a canoe once. I was up in the boundary waters of Minnesota and I was fishing and I was fighting this fish. My sunglasses fell in the water. I instinctively went to grab them and I flipped the kayak and all my gear in like six feet of freezing water. Now, I ended up being okay because I was able to get to shore and flip it back over and retrieve all my gear and get back to camp and warm up. But man, when, when, when crap happens, it happens fast. Now, standing on your fishing kayak is gonna be a, a, a real challenge for those who have really poor balance. Now, there are some options out there when it comes to balance assist poles. I know my buddy Bill um, created the steady stick. The key here is knowing your abilities, right? I hate for you to get into a dicey situation or lose your life over something like this. Always live to fish another day. All right, number six, I would also avoid buying a fishing kayak if you have the inability to right your yak and do a deep water re-entry. If you simply don't have the strength to do that or just know that far exceeds your ability, then a fishing kayak probably won't be right for you because you can get yourself in a really sticky situation if you fall out of your fishing kayak and you can't get back in. People will often underestimate what cold water can do to the human body, so you don't want to be in a situation where you fall in, the water's cold, and you can't get back in your kayak. And especially if you fish open water, this is a must. All right, let's move on to number seven. The reason you might not want to buy a fishing kayak is because casting can be difficult, right? I know when I first started kayak fishing, I had to learn like the one-handed cast, the backhand cast, the side cast, the roll cast, so I wouldn't get my lure caught up in the poles that I have behind me up in the air. So, but if you have one rod, it's not gonna be a big deal for you, but if you are going to be carrying multiple rods like I do and a lot of other kayak anglers do, then casting, you're going to have to really dial that in and there's a learning curve to it. I know for me, I also run cameras off my bow and up over my shoulder, and so you got to be able to avoid these with all of your casts. So it's not a big deal, but it's something that I didn't know getting to the sport, so something you might want to consider before buying that fishing kayak. All right, you also might want to pump the brake on purchasing that fishing kayak if you like having a, just an incredible amount of storage, right? A lot of people coming from a bank angler are moving from one taco box to a lot more storage options. So this is gonna be great for you. But if you are upgrading from a bass boat to a fishing kayak, you're gonna have to dial in what you're bringing with you. And here's where I think kayak fishing actually has an advantage because since you can't have everything at any given time at your disposal, you're forced to do some pre-fishing strategy, right? If you have everything in your boat, you're like, hey, I have everything in my boat, I don't need to really think about it. I'm just, I can just pull out whatever I want, whenever I want. But with kayak fishing, it has forced me to like, okay, I need to know what I need to bring. So I need to know the makeup of the water. So I need to go into Google Maps Pro and then I need to go and check out all the places. And I just start doing a lot more research. Uh, I used to own a, a boat. I used to just go out there and, and rip and go. And I didn't have a whole lot of luck. So it wasn't until I got to kayak fishing, it really forced me to put together a strategy because I can't take everything with me. catch fish just start shooting a video <laughs> apparently that's how that goes nice one. Oh, she took my crawl <laughs> Let's see if i can catch one with just one crawl leg it's not unusual i see crawl dad's missing a crawl leg all the time in the wild all right let's move to the ninth reason you might want to put that credit card back in your wallet if limited range is going to be an issue for you so i know on a fishing kayak right it's not like you can hop in a boat i used to own a boat and you just hop in it and you turn the engine and you rip at 30 to 60 miles per hour from spot to spot to spot. When you paddle a kayak, you're only gonna go like two miles an hour. If you pedal drive a kayak, maybe three and a half, 
you get a little bit faster when you have motors but that's not gonna move you around a giant lake super fast like a bass boat will. So if you wanna have very long range and you have a very big lake that you're gonna be fishing, you wanna be able to access all of it, buying a fishing kayak might not be right for you. However, there is an advantage to this. Whenever I had a bass boat, I just turned on the engine and I'd rip to my next spot, maybe five, 10 minutes away. In a fishing kayak, I would just fish along the way from spot to spot. And I can't tell you how this has helped me evolved as an angler because I would pick apart places and I would throw in places that I would never throw before when I was on the boat. And I have been rewarded for this over and over and over again. So it's really helped me evolve as an angler, catch more fish and bigger fish because I'm not just going to the same spot over and over and over again. I'm throwing and I'm casting and I'm picking apart cover in places that I never fished before. And man, it has been freaking awesome. Now with anything, there's gonna be pros and cons and what may be a con for one person is not for the other. Now I know for me, the pros outweigh the cons in a big way. There's nothing like fishing from a kayak, from access to places that boats simply can't get to. I, literally where I'm at right now, boats can't get to. And so there's a lot of fish that don't get pressured and I'm able to pick them up on my fishing kayak. You're gonna have access to the shallows, you're gonna be able to fish the creeks, you're gonna fish the rivers. The beauty of a kayak is that it's extremely stealthy, right? It's extremely quiet. You can sneak up on those bass. And I always tell people the easiest way to catch a bass is to cast before that thing knows that you're there. I love how close you are to the water. It makes it really easy to skip your lure. There's something about just pulling a bass out of the water and just reaching over the side and lifting it and pulling it out of the water. I just love that feeling. I also get to chuckle as I pass the fuel dock. That's always a good feeling, folks. And the kayak fishing community is absolutely incredible. I can go on and on and on. In fact, you know, like I said, I created hundreds and hundreds of videos on the topic of kayak fishing because I love it so much. But it is a sport that requires your respect because if you don't give it to it, you can get yourself into a dicey situation really fast. In fact, I did a video on this recently, 11 kayak fishing mistakes that could take your life. You can check that video out right there. <laughs>